Lupus can affect the entire body. This is something you have likely heard a million times. Heck, I've said it about a million times. But when we talk about lupus, a lot of the attention tends to be on our joints, skin, or kidneys, so we can be caught by surprise when we have heart issues. So today, let's talk about all the ways lupus can impact the heart, how to tell if this is happening to you, and how your doctor thinks about treatment. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. Okay, so as you can imagine, the heart is a complex organ that is pretty vital for our ability to stay alive. So let's move through the heart anatomy and discuss how lupus can have an impact. Let's start with the most common lupus heart issue, and that is pericarditis. The pericardium is the thin tissue sac the heart sits in. This thin sac covers the entire heart and can become inflamed for a number of reasons, lupus being one of them. Lupus pericarditis is the most common heart symptom of lupus and can result in people feeling chest pain in the middle of their chest that can worsen or change based on their position or taking a deep breath. Pericarditis will usually appear along with other lupus symptoms, meaning it doesn't usually come out of nowhere on its own, but will come alongside joint pain, rashes, or other blood tests that show you have a lot of lupus inflammation. When the pericardium gets inflamed, the pericardial tissue reacts by producing fluid that can then build up within that sac. This is called a pericardial effusion, and we can see it on an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart. It is not uncommon when someone has pericarditis to see a small pericardial effusion, but in rare cases, the fluid collection can become quite large that it puts pressure on the heart muscle and leads to inefficient heart pumping. Thankfully, this is rare, but does require your doctor to keep a close eye on you as you start treatments for the pericarditis, which I'm gonna get to later. Next, let's move on to our heart valves. So you may remember from biology class that the human heart is made up of four chambers, two atria and two ventricles, and each chamber is separated by a valve. These valves work to keep blood pumping in the right direction, so we efficiently move carbon dioxide to our lungs to breathe out and move oxygen from our lungs to into the rest of our body. Lupus isn't the only reason our heart valves can have problems, but when we have lupus, there are a few valve issues that we need to be aware of. First is mitral valve prolapse, sometimes referred to as MVP. Mitral valve prolapse is reasonably common in those with lupus. It's seen in as many of 20% of people with lupus. The mitral valve is on the left side of the heart, separating the left atria from the left ventricle, participating in moving oxygen-rich blood from the lungs to our body. Prolapse simply means when pumping, the valves fold in on themselves a little bit. They are floppy and in severe cases can cause blood to flow backwards instead of forwards. When this happens, we actually don't call it prolapse anymore, but mitral valve regurgitation. Most people with mitral valve prolapse will not have any symptoms and are only discovered when we hear a heart murmur. Another lupus valve issue is the development of vegetations. Vegetations can be found on valves and are most commonly due to infection, not lupus. When we have an infection in our blood or we have sepsis, sometimes that bacteria can plant itself on our heart valves and lead to vegetations that we call endocarditis. Well, in lupus, this can happen, but without the blood infection. These vegetations are called non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis, or it used to be called Libman Sachs endocarditis. When we have vegetations on our valve, you can imagine this could lead to a dysfunctional valve. Not only will the valve not work well, but pieces of that vegetation can break off, flow through our circulation, and then lodge in a small capillary. When this happens, we can develop things like strokes. I will often talk about the importance of learning your flavor of lupus as everyone's lupus is going to be different. Learning what your flavor is means learning what your typical symptoms are, but also learning if you have certain autoantibodies. There are a group of antibodies collectively known as the antiphospholipid antibodies that can be seen in those with lupus. And if they are part of your lupus flavor, 
then there's a higher risk for these vegetations. These antibodies are not part of a typical ANA panel and are often not discussed when you are first diagnosed with lupus, so it is something you will need to specifically ask your doctor about. Vegetations by themselves often don't lead to symptoms, but instead we are clued into their presence by observing the consequences of those vegetations, like valve dysfunction or blood clots. Facing all the complexities of lupus can be overwhelming and require more time and attention than the 15 minutes we get with our doctor. We inevitably come up with questions while at home and getting trustworthy answers to those questions, especially the very specific questions that come up in rheumatology offices can be a challenge. This is why I built the Connected Clubhouse. This is a private community for anyone facing an autoimmune condition to be amongst like-minded friends, ask your questions, and have real experts with experience like me answer them. Learn more via the link in the description box, and I hope to see you there. So we've talked about the sac the heart sits in and the valves, but what about the heart muscle itself? Well, just like the muscles of our legs and arms, the heart muscle can become inflamed and we call that myo for muscle, card for heart, itis for inflammation or myocarditis. Myocarditis is estimated to occur in 10 to 20% of those with lupus and is seen more commonly in black populations. It can lead to chest pain or shortness of breath, but often is asymptomatic. So having a keen eye and looking for clues is vital. Clues can be an out of proportion fast heart rate, an abnormal EKG, or a larger than expected heart that we see on a chest X-ray. Myocarditis often happens with other lupus symptoms and even and other lupus heart symptoms, particularly pericarditis. To see inflammation in the heart muscle, we will use a cardiac MRI. And in some cases, if it's not clear where the inflammation is coming from, because, you know, of course, myocarditis can happen for other reasons aside from lupus, we will need to do a catheterization to take a heart biopsy. This can become an issue if someone is on hydroxychloroquine, which those with lupus are often on, but in rare cases, hydroxychloroquine can lead to heart issues. Closely related to myocarditis is the presence of electrical conduction issues. So when thinking of heart anatomy, we often think of heart muscle, valves, arteries, but there is a very important structure of the heart that literally keeps it pumping, and that's the conduction system. This conduction system is a network of cells within the heart muscle that communicate via electrical current and cause the heart muscle to contract or pump blood. This system works on its own and allows our heart to pump without us having to think about it. When we have any changes to our heart muscle, the conduction system network that lives within the heart muscle can be damaged and lead to irregular heart rhythms. So if you have myocarditis or even healed myocarditis, this can lead to a conduction system change. What this means for you is your heart rate may become too fast, too slow, or irregular. And then finally, we have the coronary arteries. These are the arteries that feed the heart muscle blood and ensure our heart muscle has the oxygen it needs. Just like other arteries in our bodies, we can develop inflammation and we call that vasculitis. But much more commonly in lupus is we can develop coronary artery disease, otherwise known as cardiovascular disease, otherwise known as having a high risk for heart attacks. Just like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and every other autoimmune condition I care for, lupus carries a higher risk of developing cardiovascular disease. This risk is felt to be related to the overall lupus inflammatory load and the damage that can do to our vascular system over time. It's important to note that this risk has nothing to do with whether you have any other lupus heart issues we just went over and is more a consequence of your lupus overall, not just heart inflammation. The risk is silent, meaning we often don't feel anything. And so the best defense against this is one, controlling your lupus inflammation as best as possible, Two, controlling all other known risk factors like blood pressure, cholesterol, blood sugar, and weight. Okay, so I just went through a list of, I'll admit it, scary sounding that can happen to the heart. So what do we do about this? Well, the first thing is just being aware and noting any new symptoms like chest pain, changes in your ability to breathe or catch your breath, 
feeling changes in your heart rate, or noticing water retention in your legs, which can be a sign your heart isn't pumping efficiently. If you notice any of these changes, let your doctor know sooner rather than later so they can start with some basic testing. Basic testing will look like listening to your heart and lungs, checking a chest x-ray, doing an EKG, and doing a full once over and checking lupus blood test. These basic tests will help them determine if there are other signs your lupus is active and if there are signals that something's going on with your heart that then requires next level testing. Next level testing can mean an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of your heart, that provides a picture as it's pumping. This will show us how well the muscles and valves are working and even show us if there are vegetations. It may also mean a heart MRI or even a cardiac catheterization. If this level of testing is necessary, we will typically rope in our cardiology colleagues to help us interpret all these results. And then of course, there's treatment. Generally speaking, treatment of lupus heart issues require us pulling out our big guns. Big guns can mean lots of different things, but in lupus, it typically means using a combination of agents that will successfully quiet down inflammation quickly and over a long period of time. So we may start out with fairly high doses of prednisone to get things calm quickly, but then also use a combination of other immune system targeted medications. Depending on the issue we are facing, we may also need what I call mechanical heart treatment. Controlling lupus inflammation will be necessary, but this may not have an impact on say, a dysfunctional heart valve or conduction problem. So we may need specific conduction focused medications, pacemakers, or even surgical procedures. Having lupus affect our heart can sound scary and it certainly needs to be taken seriously. But we do have ways to diagnose the problem and treat it. So the key is paying attention if you have any new symptoms and bringing them up sooner rather than later with your doctor. The heart is just one area that can be impacted by lupus, but much more commonly we deal with lupus in our kidneys. So if you want to learn more about that, I recommend checking out this video next. As always, thanks for watching. Share this with anyone you think could benefit from this information, and I'll see you next time.